Are we in our own room? We're in our own room. How'd we get here? I don't know. Sunlight breaks through my window shortly before my alarm ruins the morning silence. I feel sore. The events of the previous evening suddenly intrude upon my consciousness and I find myself blushing. That was an uh, eventful evening and explains perfectly the soreness in my lower back. Walk back, as I recall, had been rather tense. My trousers have been uh, soiled. I washed them off in the bathroom before going back to my room. There's still a fairly obvious looking stain on the front. Fortunately for me, the only person I ran back to my Fortunately for me, the only person I ran back into on my way back was Kenji. And he didn't notice a thing. Well, apart from being in the general vicinity. Of course he'd ask how the night went and whether or not I'd learned anything of importance. I don't even know I I don't even know if I opened my mouth to answer. I was too tired to care. And this morning, I'll admit that I'm feeling pretty worn out. Still, Emmy had promised to meet me at the track, and I'd hate to disappoint. She is indeed waiting for me when I arrive. Doing her best to look cheery despite the fact that she's sitting in a wheelchair. Or we have to run and begin stretching. You're early. And my friend shakes her head. Ridiculous. You're late. Overslept us out. I'll tucker it out. Well, at least she seems more like her old self. And as expected, she doesn't seem to be shy about our mentioning our uh, previous activities. Hey, you're lucky I could show up at all. All that cardiovascular activity last night. You know, they thought I'd have to see the nurse afterwards. And we laughs out loud, and then her face suddenly becomes more concerned. Hey, that's not a... I mean, you're not... Go on, spit it out. It's just that it'd be hard to explain if you had an episode while we were... Oh. Oh. Now that she mentioned it, it really is a legitimate concern. I certainly had thought of it last night. Of course, other more pressing concerns have been at hand. Well, I don't think anything uh, we er, do is going to be more of a strain than these morning runs, and I handle this fine, so... Let me consider this point. A diva's light appears in her eyes. Oh my god. Say! Hmm? Light vanishes, and Emmy grins ruefully at me. I can't help but feel vaguely suspicious. I, uh, I seem to have forgotten a pair of gloves. This is the scene I... Oh god, here we go. There's like three of these. What do you need gloves for? And we indicate the chair upon which she's seated. Uh, for this, of course. Uh, sure, regular moving around is all well and good without them, but I want to be able to get a good workout. And to get a kind of speed. Yeah, you gotta have gloves if you don't want to blisters. If you don't want a blisters. So, what, are you wussing out on me then? Do I have to go it alone? Let me think for a minute, or pretends to think. Hmm, if I remember right, there's a spare, or there's a spare pair or two in the track shed. So she does seriously want to do it then. But in an old school uniform? I'd have expected to wear a gym outfit for something like this. Wait, what are they doing there? Emmy looks askance at me. Seriously? You can't think of why a shed full of track supplies for a school at the disabled would have racing gloves. Well, when she puts it that way, I suppose it makes perfect sense. Hey, I'm still getting used to this place. Give me a break, huh? I guess I can let it slide this time. Now come on, I need your help. I can't imagine what for, but then again, I never have a clue why racing gloves were being the shed, so I'm not willing to press the issue. God damn it, Asao! <sighs> you idiot. Holy shit, that's the track shed? Wow. Okay, this I forgot that it looks like this apparently. This is gonna be even more awkward. For those of you, you should okay, you pro, you probably know what's gonna happen here. Emmy navigates her way to the shed easily enough. I can hear her grumbling under her breath. It's actually kinda cute. I hear a little reach of the door first. Opening oh, will be easier for me than for her. Oh I Yeah, yeah, I remember this too. Door opens and Emmy starts to wheel inside, only to come to a sudden halt at the doorway. It seems the doorway it seems the door still is slightly too high for her to get over by herself. <laughs> she makes a few runs at it unsuccessfully before crossing her eyes and glaring at the pending object. Stupid wheelchair! Miss Sal, can you give me a hand here? Sure, no problem. It's a simple enough matter for me to bump Evie over the doorway, jostling her slightly. Hey, easy there! Whoops, sorry! Is that about this time that I failed to notice where I'm going and run Emmy's chair into a mat? She gives a startled yelp and topples forward out of her chair. Good job, Miss Sal! It's a moment of silence as I gaze and horror on what I've done, but Emmy glares and Emmy glares at me. Is Sal? Yes. Promise me you'll never work at a hospital. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Emmy giggles and holds up a hand. Would you kindly help me back into my chair, Sal? As I bend down to pick up Emmy, she grins in triumph 
and pulled me into Chris. That quickly has us both entirely unconcerned about getting her back into the chair. Yep, here we go. In fact, as I move into a more comfortable position, I confess that the chair is pushed out the door, which, started by the passage, swings shut. Well, at least we got privacy now, which is a good thing as my hands work quickly to remove Emmy's blouse and skirt. I'm sorry to discover that she's forgotten to put a bra on today. Did she plan this? Her arms hook under mine and rest on my shoulders as I kiss my way down Emmy's neck, pausing to give special attention to a, uh, a spot where the uh, neck meets the shoulder that I'd found last night. Y you've gotten pretty good at the... the, the... I do try. Emmy pushes at my chest, insistently, and I draw back with a puzzled expression. I've got a confession to Sal. Oh. Having pulled back, I decided to focus my attention on her breasts. As she attempts to speak, her words are interspersed with giggles that I find incredibly cute. I don't... <laughs> Actually, whoa, 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 wear gloves! My own reply is rather mumbled onto her chest, instead of being addressed to her face. Oh! I see. I should have known. Words quickly become irrelevant. Irrelevant. And his movements are almost frantic, as if she's trying... As if she's been holding something back since we met this morning, and now she has an outlet. I'm very nearly caught off guard by aggressiveness, feeling her nearly rip my shirt off. The way she seems to vie in, the way she seems to vie to be in the dominant position. You know, this is pretty good exercise for for Emmy. Even if she can't run, she can do this every day. Oh god, I really hope I don't have to voice this every day. <laughs> for my part, I confess that I'm slightly caught up in her attitude as well, fighting back, rolling and wrestling, even as I caress her press. Even as our fingers dig into my shoulders, I just check where we are. So much so that I roll right off the mat and land on something small and rather hard. Ow! Emmy, still flushed and breathing a little heavily, peers at me and bursts into laughter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you alright? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure what I landed on, though. Don't, don't. It, it can't be. 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 We're in a track shit. I reach under my back and pull the offending object out, inspecting it closely. I f oh my god, we're under track shed. <sighs> Personal lubricant, lemon flavored. Wait, what? And his eyes shoot upwards as she and she begins, if possible, to laugh even harder. Somehow, I don't think this is this isn't track related. Oh man, I know who's that is. What? It's the track captains. Uh. Ah, my old nemesis, so kind of. I just know it's his. It appears I've asked a stupid question. At least Emmy's think so. Because he's the one on the... Because he's the one who told me the track shit was a good place for... What do you call them? The clandestine encounters? Oh. He invites you to one or something? And he bursts into more laughter. I confess the sight of a naked Emmy laughing is oddly beautiful. I feel an eagerness to end the conversation and get back to what we were doing, despite my rather pointed questioning. Hey, Sal. The track cat's gay. Huh. That would, uh... Really? And here I initially thought you two were a couple. Well, I did have a crush on when I first joined up, but he wasn't interested. Obviously. But we were good friends, I suppose. I mean, he told me about all this, you know. I hesitate to ask. And really, I do, but I ask anyway. But what does he need the, uh... Loop for one He's gay! <laughs> I mean, he doesn't, uh... How does Emmy manage not to blush? Obviously he used it for, you know... Anal? I try to suppress a snicker. I fail. And he's giggling too. And he tells you all about all this? And he shrugs. Yeah, of course. He's kind of wild about the whole thing. Says it's a feeling that can't be beat. Uh-huh. Aaron the track shed seems to have changed with some kind of horrible curiosity. That's interesting. I suppose I have to take his word for it. Well? Birds outside stop chirping. Wind dies down. Somewhere, I'm a cup of coffee. He freezes with the cup at his lips. We could... maybe... I try it? My jaw suddenly and spontaneously unhinges and hits the floor. Well, we wouldn't need a condom then. <laughs> what? what, what? And he's finally blushing, rubbing the back of her head ruefully. Uh, well, it's... It's just that we really can't uh, do what we did last night, you know? It would... It would be a little... It wouldn't be safe, you know? I mean, it wasn't exactly a great idea last night. What? You did? Oh my god, you didn't even use one. You didn't even use one. <laughs> wow. You are really fucking lucky. 
So, you know, we could try and see if this is, uh, is as good? Well, yeah, basically. Huh. Oh my god. 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 Wow. You. You. You fuck. You. Not literally. I, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Careful. Are you uh, sure about this? I positioned my Emmy. He was looking back over her shoulder, looking a little flushed. That doesn't look very flushed. That looks pale as the rest of her. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That. Your face. Your face. Those basketballs. That is a really badly drawn basketball. Holy shit. That looks like One Punch Man. Well, obviously, once we decide to go ahead with this idea, we had to get back into the mood. That accomplished, we emptied the bottle of lube. You emptied it? And here we are. Yes, I'm sure. Come on, before I calm down and think too much about this. His breathing is still coming a little heavily, and her response is almost impatient. Which is to be expected, I suppose. We're both so close, and this is kind of delaying things. I think we've both gone temporarily insane. <laughs> at least that's what... At least... That's going to be my claim from here on out. I try hard not to think about the specifics of what I'm about to get myself into. There's no way this is going to be very clean. Oh my god. I don't, I don't want to do this. Taking a breath that is much for me as it is for her, I enter slowly. There's a lot of resistance. Okay, now you're a little more flushed, I think. I don't know. And it's like both our bodies are reluctant to actually go through with this. <laughs> god. Oh, I remember. I remember... Uh, meme. Yeah, this game has memes of this face. I know, I'm totally ruining the mood. I don't even fucking care. Emmy's whole body tenses. And I'm, and as I'm only partially in by this point, it feels surprisingly good, if a bit odd. Emmy, on the other hand, looks uncomfortable. The expression is almost comical. How do you know? Your eyes are fucking closed. She's looking ahead. It's not like you're doing this reverse and you can see her face or anything. It's not like there's a mirror in front of her. Uh, should I stop? I mean, his breath hitches in her throat, and it seems to take a few seconds longer than it should to formulate a reply. N no, keep going. It just feels weird. She giggles. I can't blame her. I'm surprised that I even managed to form a sentence. It's hot. It feels exceedingly odd. Loop glistens unnaturally. It makes me uncomfortable. I continue to work my way inside her, working slowly and listening carefully to Emmy's breathing. I reach my limit and pause. Emmy looks back again, biting her lower lip. Are you gonna try moving? Or are we just gonna sit here feeling silly? And no, I just wanted to give you a chance to adjust. This doesn't make any sense. How the hell did we even decide to do this? I... I don't think there's really any adjusting to this, Asao. Try moving? Maybe it'll feel better? She sounds doubtful, but certainly unwilling to admit defeat now that we've come so far. I begin a slow motion that seems to work well for both myself and Emmy. More than this is probably censored, by the way, in case you obviously you've already noticed. I don't. I still haven't edited Hanako's thing, which is the first thing I've done. Even though this is probably gonna go before that, because this is Act Three, not Act Four, and I don't know what I'm gonna use. I don't know if I'm gonna blur this out. Obviously, you can already see, or if I'm gonna use black bars. But uh, you know, I begin a slow motion that seems to work well for both myself and Emmy. As she closes her eyes and attempts to concentrate on this new feeling, as we begin to find a rhythm. I begin to find that familiar falling away sensation I got yesterday. Oh my god. I close my eyes and try to lose myself in the feeling, except it doesn't seem right. Emmy's not making any noise. And very quickly yesterday, Emmy is somewhat less quiet when she's enjoying herself. As I open my eyes, I see that Emmy's trying to get into things, but it just doesn't seem to be working for her. Her eyes are closed and she's biting her lip, but it seems to be out of toleration rather than enjoyment. A sort of, well, this was a failure, but hopefully it'll be okay soon look. I'm caught in a bit of the situation here. <laughs> In truth, I don't want to stop. But at the same time, it doesn't seem to be doing much for me. Or if it is, it's coming on far slower than I am. I feel bad. I want me to enjoy this too. <laughs> you can't see it. You can't see it. It's it's black or blurred or whatever. I reach one arm around to tease enemy's chest, which startles her. This in turn causes her to tighten around me considerably, causing a wave of pleasure to blindside me. My cat seems to amuse at me, but her grin quickly turns into a gasp. As I move my other hand casually down her front and begin to stroke her gently, and a soft patch of hair between her legs. Motion of my own hips increases as my hand 
ministration as my hands ministrations to Emmy's front. Bring back the gasping yelps that I'm used to. Concentrate only on the feeling of my hands. One now slick and sliding, the other on skin soft and responsive. Goosebumps on her flesh, shivers and sweats as her own building climax causes her to tighten. To finally, I can't possibly. No, I can't possibly. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm going to. <laughs> I give a final thrust. My fingers tense around Emmy's nipples, dive between her legs. Oh my god. Emily's back spasms and she arcs up. A high girlish cry that echoes off the walls. I feel the wave of my own climax and annihilate all other sessions in my, uns 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 in my body. <laughs> Emily's arms give out and she falls forward, rather violently disengaging us and pulling something dear to me in the process. <laughs> Sudden squish from pleasure to pain caused me to lose my balance, and I fall forward on top of enemy. Ow! Ow! I quickly roll off enemy and prop myself up, breathing heavily, trying to ignore the pain in my crotch. Wow. Emmy yelps a little as she rolls over. She grabs a couple of the tissues we kept handy earlier, and she cleans up before getting her panties back on and awkward leaning against the wall. Still breathing heavily, I decide to sit up against the wall next to her. Feeling of the cool concrete against my sweat back is a welcome sensation. That hurt at the end! Yeah, I, uh... This was probably not a great idea. Emmy squirms in order to try and sit down beside me. Without too much pain, judging by wincing, it doesn't seem to work. Yeah, I'm gonna have words with the captain. He was clearly lying. The utter and absolute ridiculousness of the situation suddenly hits, and I begin laughing. And she shakes her head and begins laughing with me. Hey, Asao. Yeah? We're never doing this again, right? Yeah, I think my curiosity is satisfied on this one. I mean, not satisfied. Good. I think we should maybe stick to the basics, don't you? I mean, most of this is new to me anyway. What do you mean, most? I mean, grins impishly. Now never tell. Wow. <sighs> well, suddenly we're disappointed. An unpleasant thought strikes me. Even more unpleasant is the thought of having to ask Emmy about it. Still, after we've just done, it should be a cakewalk. Hey, is there a sink? I kind of like to uh, uh, wash off a little. Emmy's jaw drops. In the sink? Well, there's not really anything else to do there, is there? And it, I, I, I want to avoid a smell. Nurse might notice. It's the most awkward conversation I've ever had. You're right. Uh, yeah, there is. It's on the back wall. Wow. And there might be some soap, too. Thanks. There is, in fact, a little hand soap, which is better than nothing. No towel, though. Guess I'll just have to drip dry. All finished? Yeah, that'll do for now. It's not like I'm going to take a shower after we see the nurse. It's not like I'm not going to take a shower after we see the nurse. Glad to hear it. And now, uh, help me find my clothes. You tossed them somewhere. Hey, you know better. How am I supposed, how am I supposed to explain the whole shirt in my... Hey, you know better. How am I supposed to explain the whole shirt? Oh my god. I'm, I'm reading this wrong. I, I'm thinking that's whole as in W-H-O-L-E. Hey, you know better. How am I supposed to explain that hole in my shirt? Not, hey, you know better. How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to explain the whole... The shirt. <laughs> uh, sorry, I got a little excited earlier. No, duh. Takes some time, but we finally, are, but finally, we're both more or less clothed. It's a frantic moment where neither of us knows where Emmy's wheelchair is, but I recall it going through the door and rescue it. Now be more careful going through the door this time, would you? Bumps are not my friend right now. I'm so sorry we tried this. I mean, shrugs and grins. Well, it was worth a shot, right? And anyway, it was good exercise, right? Can't argue that. Yep, gotta do it every day though, for Emmy's sake. At least weekdays. <laughs> Weekends, who knows. We should make our way off to the nurse's office, and notice that Emmy keeps shifting uncomfortably in her seat. God, this feels weird. Good thing I'm in a wheelchair, Sal. Why's that? Because now I don't have to explain to the nurse why I'm walking funny. Oh. Well, yeah, we're never doing this again. The nurse is at least kind enough not to comment on the marks that Emmy left on my shoulders. In order to say, what about Emmy's constant shifting by in a wheelchair? Either he didn't notice or he didn't want to notice. <laughs> All the same, I'm gonna have to make sure he didn't slip cyanide into my medication for a while. Uh, yeah. Just to be safe. I shower for longer than usual just to be sure that I'm cleaning up a little experiment and collapse in my bed. Class is in 20 minutes, so I can probably afford a nap. Yeah, let's just sleep through the whole class, why not? Skip the day. Oh well.
knock knock who's there knock knock that's not how the joke goes at all knock knock I already said who's there more importantly what time is it even more important what day I'm suddenly captivated into wakefulness by the fact the knocking still hasn't stopped and the fact that it's noon on a school day not fully awake I can remember why I was napping better not give that excuse to Muto so I was in class I experimented sexually with my girlfriend and tried out and tired me out yeah that'll go over well Wonder how long this knocking is going to continue. Guess I ought to answer the door. I'm strangely unsurprised to see Kenji on the other side. Though it appears that Kenji is surprised to see me. What the hell are you doing here, man? Well, I was sleeping. Kenji nods in understanding. Knocked out, I see. I told you to be careful about that Ibra. I told you to be careful around that Ibra Zaki chick, man. This is the sort of thing that happens when you aren't cautious. Yeah, I, I know now. He makes an attempt to look at the back of my head. Did he hit you with something? Or was it a drug? Stop trying to touch me. Can you produce a flashlight and shines in my eyes? You got a concussion? I was knocked out. Maybe you just don't remember. This conversation isn't going anywhere. No, I just had a tiring morning fell asleep. Whatever, man. If you want to be in denial about this, I guess I can't stop you. But you gotta watch out for that girl, man. She's not safe. What? She's not safe to be around. She's one of the most sinister agents. If you're not careful, there's no telling what could happen. She's brought down stronger men than you, you know. What the hell are you talking about? She's not an Asian or anything. She didn't knock me out, okay? I also highly doubt that she's brought down anyone at all. Kenji looks almost offended. I have no idea why. Y you don't believe me? That's cold, man. Real cold. I'm just trying to look out for you. That's what friends do, you know. We're friends? No idea. Then again, what if Kenji knows what being a friend even entails? I feel something like pity for him, standing there before me. He does think he's looking out for me. I know, I know. Sorry about that. Thanks for the warning. Hold my hand as a sign of peace. Kenji shakes it gingerly. Gingerly. My guy, like my hand could possibly be on fire. There's an awkward silence for a few seconds, but Kenji remembers that he's still shaking my hand. Anyway, I need a favor. What kind of favor? I'm out of money. No, you aren't. You got money kept in your desk drawer under a black notebook for emergencies. Did you ransack my room? That's not important. I don't need money anyway. He drops a very serious tone. About to undertake a major op. It'll blow the whole conspiracy wide open if I'm right. But it's dangerous, so I need you to do something for me in case I don't come back. Uh, sure, man. Anything. What the hell's he planning on doing? Shall we tell someone about this? If I go missing, wait three days, and then mail my journal off to the newspapers. It's hidden in my room under a false bottom in one of the desk drawers. How do I get into your room? I don't have a key. Kenji looks at me like I'm crazy. So pick the lock. You know how to do that, right? It's important to skill learn at a young age. Uh, yeah, of course I know how. I'll be sure to uh, do that for you if you uh, if you uh, go missing. I don't think I want to read Kenji's journal. Either way, Kenji seems pretty happy that I've agreed to do this thing for him. Great man, great. See you around, I got stuff to do. He's gone, dashing down the hallway. He made it seem so final. I hope I don't have to carry out his final wishes. Shake my head, I close my door and walk back to my bed. Guess I should go to class and only catch the last half of the day. But I've come this far without going to class today. And I did want to read more of that Hawking book Muto lent me. I'm sure I'll understand. Besides, we don't have stuff to do it anyways. Knock, knock. This time, I always jerked my attention away from my book. My experience is not like being woken up. Who's there? Me! Aren't you glad? Voice is, the voice is muffled through the door, but unmistakably Emmy's. I hop up and open the door, smiling broadly. Hey, nice to see you again. Emmy grins back, staring up at me from a wheelchair. Yeah, you would have seen me earlier, but the damned elevator wasn't working. How do we find them to fix it? you think they could keep it in better order, but no! I chuckle with her vexed expression and invite her in. She wheels in easily, and with my help, she hops onto my bed. There, much more comfortable than that stupid chair. A sigh of contentment hangs in the air. For a minute, we both just stare at one another. It's at this point that I notice circles under Emmy's eyes. Not that dark, but they definitely weren't there before. What nice about them? Emmy fixes me with a mischievous glit a stare. So, I couldn't help but notice you weren't at lunch today. In fact, I don't think I saw you at all. What happened? Hmm? Fell asleep. I actually didn't wake up until lunch. And only then because Kenji woke me up. What had you so tired? Hmm? Shen Yu's workout this morning, so I think comfortable too. Let me coughs. A half laughing, half embarrassed noise. Uh, remind me to not do that again. No problem. Wasn't exactly right for me either, to be honest. We'll just have to avoid that from now on. Are you, uh, you still store? And Mr. me in disbelief. Why, it's a legitimate question. Of all the questions I never thought I'd be asked, that's one of them. 
Well, I didn't ever actually... Well, I didn't ever... I didn't ever expect to have to ask it, so we're even. I mean, last this. I guess so, huh? Uh, well, since you asked, yes, I'm still a little sore. We're never doing that again. No arguments from here. I on escape, so no reason I row. Tired? And we nod sleepily. Haven't slept well. Not sleeping well. I can tell that she didn't mean to tell me this either, because she gives a little start. Like she's just been caught lying and hastens to add. Uh, it's not a big deal, though. What's the trouble? Amy shrugs and refuses to elaborate. Stressed over exams. Another shrug, but after a pause, Amy nods hesitantly. Uh, yeah, I guess. Actually, that's why I stopped by. She begins to look more and more miserable. Not so you'd notice, of course, but her eyes are on her lap, and she's fidgeting and her voice is quiet. Uh, we, uh, we need to stop hanging out so much. Huh? Why? Amy takes a deep breath like she's been practicing this. And because you're too much fun to be around, and I can't concentrate when you're near me. With exams coming up soon, I just, I can't have that distraction. Otherwise, my grades will be pretty lousy, I'm afraid. I can help you study. She smiles at me, clearly unhappy with the situation. I'd love it if you could, but uh, we wouldn't actually study, would we? I mean, even now, I'm trying to have a conversation with you, but I kind of just want to uh, not converse. Ah, uh, overwhelmed by my rugged manliness, I understand. That earns me a grin, at least. Amy shakes her head. Idiot, you're full of yourself. Well, I am pretty irresistible. Yeah, uh, more or less, I guess. So that's the situation, is how I have too much fun around you, and if I'm going into exams prepared, I need to be alone. Hey, that's okay. It, seems to be, it really seems to have been bothering her. Besides, it's only a couple weeks, and we'll still see each other in the mornings and at lunch. We can just hang out at school, no problem. And after exams, we'll go on a date to celebrate their being over, okay? Emmy grins, pleased by this proposal. Yeah, sure! That sounds great! As if to signal the end of the conversation, she leans in and kisses me. The rest of the night is not spent worrying about exams. Wow. I guess it's a final goodbye, eh? Probably more than just that, isn't it? Given how serious this game is, the feels.